certainly thankful once again to be able to do our weekly stream of, you know, been meaning to actually do it since Monday, you know, and I finally, uh, Lord willing, just kind of gave me an opportunity to be able to do this uh, once again, you know, but um, just a little recap of last week, you know, we uh, we began to study, you know, Ecclesiastes in the seventh chapter and, um, and we're just kind of put it on my heart, you know, to split this up into two parts, you know, and, uh, you know, we begin to talk about, you know, how, you know, I guess like all the, uh, as you begin to really dig into, you know, Ecclesiastes uh, chapter seven here, you know, you begin to see, you know, on how the writer, you know, it seemed like every verse, there's like two parts to it, you know, and that's kind of why, you know, Lord just kind of put it on my heart as, you know, as I was studying and praying on this kind of showed me that, you know, this was one of those scriptures where, you know, there were, you know, definitely pretty deep, I guess you could say, you know, as we begin to go and dig into this, but you know, we're going to go ahead and continue on, actually. But I, like I said, a little recap of last week, we began to talk about, you know, wisdom, you know, and loving it. And, you know, the um, and basically kind of really dig in what the writer is actually saying here, you know. And we kind of, one thing I, we actually kind of dug into a little bit is in verse two, you know, it's better to go to the house of mourning than to go to the house of feasting. You know, we begin to kind of expound on that and what that meant, you know, and how, you know, it's, there's a seriousness, there's a time and place for everything. And we even talked about that, too, on how the writer kind of, you know, mentioned on how there's a time and place for everything under the sun, you know, and it's actually a scripture in here. But one thing that I love about this is, you know, as you go and you dig deep into this, you know, you even kind of see, too, how even says verse nine, you know, be not hasty in the spirit to be angry for angry resteth in the bosom of fools. So he also kind of talks about, too, you know, times of applying, you know, you know, in using the experiences that you've learned from, you know, and knowing how to apply them, you know, and I'm thankful that, you know, he, you know, he, again, he does a really nice job of penning this down and going into, and going into detail about those things. So we're going to go ahead and um, just, just a little brief recap there, you know, but uh, we're going to go ahead and continue on. We left off actually, we went ahead and did a uh, verse 18, you know, not so long ago, and we're just going to go ahead and finish off the chapter, you know, starting in verse 19, actually of Ecclesiastes seven, for those that might be tuning in or getting on here at a later time, you know, and we'll continue on to teach on this. But verse 19 says this, Wisdom strengtheneth the wise men, the wise more than ten mighty men which are in the city. You know, so, you know, one thing that's really nice about, you know, when you obtain wisdom in the Lord, you know, one thing that is, you know, for certain, you know, it's stronger that, you know, wisdom will take you really far. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, he says it's more than ten mighty men which are in the city. You know, it's wisdom is, you know, having wisdom, or I guess you could say strategy in a way, you know, now, now I'm not talking about creating your own strategy. I'm, I mean, like allowing the Lord to give you, I guess you could say a strategy, but having wisdom and learning from those experiences, you know, is always stronger than just immediately reacting to things, I guess you could say, or immediately, you know, taking up arms, I guess you could say in certain ways, you know, and that's kind of what he's talking about here. You know, he says it strengtheneth the wise men more than 10 mighty men. You know, I'll tell you, wisdom always will you know, go farther than immediately reacting, you know, and that's something I will say as, you know, as Christians, you know, carrying the flesh, you know, we got a tendency to do that at times, you know, we have a tendency that, you know, instead of, you know, stepping back, you know, and just kind of really thinking before we do something. And I, and in our case, as a Christian, you know, really praying about it, we have a, t a tendency at times to kind of react before, you know, actually just stepping back, you know, and that's kind of what he's talking about here. But then he says right here in verse 20, for there is not a just man upon the earth that doeth good and sinneth not. And then he says in 21, and take no heed unto all words that are spoken, lest thou hear thy servant curse thee. So this is actually kind of deep, you know, and you know, in Sunday school, you know, we've been, uh, you know, and just, I, I couldn't help, but I've been pondering on it all week, you know, and, you know, because there was a lot of really good discussion, you know, about, you know, we were actually in Sunday school studying about the fall of man, you know, and how that God, you know, because of the choice of Adam, and this is the biggest thing that I was trying to, I guess you could say, trying to articulate, actually went, and, you know, and because God had given him a choice, and because Adam made his choice, you know, we were talking about how God intentionally made his design that way, because think about this, you know, and we kind of we were talking about this, too, you know, and this is why, again, you know, the flesh says that it's enmity against God, you know, the flesh, you know, can't, you know, and that's kind of what the writer is talking about in terms of wisdom, you know, so first off, the flesh, you know, has never been, you know, God doesn't save the flesh, you know, and even after, and we even talked about how the sin of Adam, you know, carried on all the way down, you know, from a death reign from Adam to Moses, talking about how it went from Adam all the way on, you know, and how there comes a point in time, you know, for an accountability of sin, you know, when God speaks to your heart. But it's also talking about the human imperfection, how there's none that do good. You know, he even says in another scripture, there's none that doeth good, no, not one, you know, and, you know, you can't do good without, you know, being saved, having the spirit, you know, intervene. But anyway, 
we were talking about how in the creation of the garden, you know, because that Adam still had a free will and a choice, how, you know, God designed, he, his design was as intended, you know, and, and if he, and if the flesh would have been perfect, you know, then there would have been no choice to make is, I guess you could say is kind of what we were talking about and kind of expounding on, you know, and, you know, God intentionally designed man that way, because again, all the way, even from the very beginning, and we kind of talked about this because there's two trees in there. There's the tree of knowledge of good and evil, and then there's the tree of life, you know, but God intended for his design, you know, he wanted his design to choose him all the way from the very beginning. And it's the same thing today, you know, and it's not just a, a choice of saying, I believe, but it's also a change of the heart, you know, turning away from the sinful state of man, you know, the human nature, you know, that's kind of why, and, you know, Lord just kind of, and I don't know why we're so stuck on this, but, you know, the Lord just be kind of, you begin to, you know, I kind of, I kind of posed the question to me the other day, you know, and, you know, first off, we believe, you know, that first off that Christ was that perfect sacrifice. You know, he came, took the human nature upon himself, and there's Bible for that. But the difference between him and Adam, obviously, is that even though, you know, he carried on the sinful flesh, you know, on himself, he was still God. He was still the savior of the world. See, God didn't create man, you know, and I'm going to say this, you know, it says that he created him in his image and his likeness. When two things are like, they're, they're, they're similar, but there's still things, there's still differences. And what do I mean by that? Well, you go to the garden when God created Adam in the garden, you know, first of all, it says he created him in his image and likeness, you know, an image is a representation. We talked about that, you know, he created him without sin at that particular time because sin had, it came alive. But he designed him to where he still had free will, you know, and again, you know, so that right there, because that he was able to make that choice, he didn't design his flesh to where, you know, it was perfect because if his flesh was perfect, there wouldn't have been a choice. Adam would have never made a choice. Even Eve, I'll even go that far. Eve would have never been beguiled, even if Satan would have tried because she would have been perfect. You know, we, again, we'd be almost like drones. It would be impossible to sin because of the flesh would have been perfect, but God didn't design it that way. He intended for his design again. To choose him, we made we were like him by him creating us without sin. But where we sinned, you know what is sin? It's transgression of the law. You know, tra sin sin is basically you know to know to do good and do with it not. It is sin. You know, it's anything opposite of what God tells us to do. So anyway, you know, we know that you know again, Adam transgressed the commandment of God of eating from the tree that he wasn't supposed to by making his choice. He chose opposite to what God did. You know, again, that's where the difference. You know, is again, God didn't make us equal to Him. You know, because God is still above us, just like Jesus when He came. He was that perfect sacrifice because He He took on the human nature, but He sinned not. And, and I don't believe it was really possible for Him to because again, He was God in the in the in, in the human form. You know, hundred percent man, hundred percent God. That's why. They referred him to the son of man, you know, but anyway, that's kind of what the writer's talking about here is he's showing him that there's none that do, does good on the earth, you know, even there, there's none perfect, including yourself. So was well, something to kind of take into account. And I was kind of thinking on this is, you know, when you, um, you know, when, you know, even with wisdom, you got to take into account too, that when you face things, when you face trials or when you, or sometimes, you know, our struggles are internal, when we're faced things, you could have all the wisdom in the world, but you still have human imperfection no matter where you go, even within this flesh or no matter who, you know, or, or even whether it be with somebody else, you know, that's something that you will have to deal with, you know, is that you or keep in the back of the mind. But then he says right here and take no heed unto words that are spoken, lest thou hear thy servant curse thee, you know, for oftentimes also thine heart own heart knoweth that thou thyself likewise hath cursed others. So he's basically saying, just remember, you know, even with all the wisdom that you have, just remember that, you know, you too are like anybody else. You are, you know, that's even why the writer even said it in another spot. It rains on the just and the unjust alike. But what sets apart a Christian? What sets apart a Christian is the fact that they're saved by the grace of God. And the only way to truly be in the likeness of God, you know, is to actually have the spirit of God to be saved. You know, that's the only true way. You know, there has to be an intervention and the spirit has to intervene, you know, and, and intervene to basically, I guess you could say, keep the flesh into subjection. You know, to keep the flesh from doing what the flesh desires and is capable of doing. That's why it takes a savior, you know, to save you. You know, thank God for that. But even in all of our wisdom, basically the writer is saying, understand that we're imperfect. Other people are imperfect, you know, and that's kind of why you know, we'll mention it again. That's even why, like, you know, like when people get mad, you know, they have a tendency, again, to react more than really step back. You know, that's why he said, be angry, but let not the sun go down in your lives. Don't dim the light through the flesh. You know, you can't put it out if you're saved. But don't dim the light, you know, thank God for that. But he also said, too, you know, right here in verse 23, all this have I proved by wisdom. 
And so he, he proved it, you know, and it says, I said, I will be wise, but it was far from me. So again, you know, uh, Solomon, you know, we've talked about it before. He understood too that, you know, he had big shoes to fill when he was leading, you know, the children of Israel. He knew that when he was going to lead the children of Israel, he needed, you know, a good amount. He had, he needed to have wisdom. He needed wisdom from God to lead the people. He knew that again, he saw right there, as I said, but it was far from me. He knew that it was far from him and it took God to give him that wisdom. It's kind of the same for us, you know. True wisdom that comes from God, you know, experiences from God, let me say that, you know, those are things, we, and, and that's kind of like the second part of, I guess you could say, of what we're teaching on here is, you know, love the wisdom of God, but also to seek more of it. You know, when you seek more of it, that's why we have to seek more of it, because it's far from us, you know, and now, what do I mean by far? Now, do I mean out of reach? No, I don't mean it out of reach, because if you have the Spirit, you just got to go to the Spirit for it. But what I do mean is that, you know, it being far from us, you have to be able to go, you have to seek it out, is basically what I'm trying to say. So he knew that it was far from me. And then he says, that which is far off and exceeding deep, who can find it out? You know, so he's basically saying, you know, that's something that we were ignorant of. Ignorant, when we say ignorant, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're stupid. It, it, to be ignorant of something also can mean that you have lack of knowledge or experience of something. That could also be, that could be, you know, again, you know, it, it, man has an ignorance about them because we carry this flesh. You know, so what does it say right here? Who can find it out? You know, well, obviously the answer to that is you can find it out through God. You know, thank God for that. But And thank God that he's willing to do that. But he takes it even deeper right here. He says, I, he, I applied my heart to know and to search and to seek out wisdom and the reason of things and to know the wickedness of folly, even of foolishness and madness. And I find more bitter than death the woman whose heart is snares and nets and her hands as bands, who so pleaseth God shall escape from her, but the sinner shall be taken by her. So he takes it even a step further here. He's not saying that women are, you know, snares and nets. It's not literal women. You know, what he's talking about is we have a tendency at times to go after things. You know, he's basically talking about harlots in a way here, you know, and, and it's again, not, it's not specific. You know, if you take it literal, then you're going to think he's talking about a dog and women. And that's not what he's doing at all. You know, it, revelation, I believe revelation, you know, we've talked about this before. It talk, there's actually a woman, a harlot. She was a woman arrayed in purple. It's a big image of this woman holding a cup full of abominations. You know, what she actually stood for was evil desires and evil works, you know, but the only way to be turned away from those evil desires and evil works is Jesus Christ. You know, he's the only one that is able to do that. So when you go after those things, you go after those snares, you know, and, and, and I'll tell you Solomon again, too, this is basically what he's saying. He's basically saying, I applied my heart to know so and to search. So he wanted to know, you know, that's something that, you know, again, when you have wisdom, you have a tendency to try to seek more of it and you do, and you basically apply yourself to go and understand those things and to gain more of it. But also too, what he's saying too, Solomon, I will say he was experienced in this. You know, he, you know, think about it, you know, he caused actually because of his actions, he surrounded himself around and this was a literal time, you know, as he surrounded himself around the scripture says, you know, some strange women and, and you know, harlots. And what they did is they took his heart away from God is what they did. Even in see, and that's basically what it's talking about here too, is that even within him being one of the wisest men in the Bible, you know, he still, you know, still again, carried the flesh, still understood that, you know, that, you know, there was still human imperfection inside his imperfection. Let me throw that out there. His imperfection was when he surrounded himself around these strange women, they took his heart completely away from God. And he started sacrificing and making altars to these wicked, you know, little G gods and goddesses. And you, his actions, you know what they did is they caused a huge split between, you know, the North and the South of the children of Israel, a huge split between the North, you know, with the children of Israel completely divided the kingdom. You know, that's when, you know, Jeroboam and Rehoboam, you know, they came about, you know, too, and very wicked Kings, I will say probably one of the worst I'll say, you know, and, you know, but again, he, he had from experience, he knew that, you know, it was all foolishness and madness. He said, you know, and again, too, you know, those snares and nets, those are things that, you know, this flesh will get us into at times, you know, and Satan will set those devices up. You know, there's, there's constantly snares and nets, a snare and a net. I'll throw an example, getting mad very quickly. You know, it could be, you know, you know, wanting to do things on your own instead of seeking out God first, you know, it could be, you know, all kinds of different things along the lines of that, you know, but Notice what he said right here. Now, this one kind of really, you know, I found this very interesting. Verse 27, he said, Behold, this have I found, saith the preacher, counting one by one to find out the account. So the way I'm taking that is he actually tried to sit down and count all the times, you know, I guess you could say count all the times that, you know, uh, I guess you could say count all those snares, you know, I guess you could say, or count all those times where, you know, you know, because it says right here, 28, which yet my soul seeketh, but I find not one man among a thousand have I found, but a woman among all these things have I not found. So what's he talking about? He tried to sit down and literally count all the times that he fell into those snares and those things. 
You know, I, that really touched my heart, you know, by re actually kind of reading this a little bit too. You know, let me throw that out here. You know, let's even look at the opposite. You know, I heard an elder one time say, and it, and it just blessed me a lot, you know, because it's true, you know, and that is, you know, there was actually a, a younger, you know, he was actually talking about how, you know, when he was a younger preacher, he literally tried to sit down and count all the times that he's been blessed by God. And you want to know what he found? He couldn't count them. You know, and this is kind of, I think that's kind of what the same case of what this, uh, what, what, you know, the brother's saying right here, you know, what Solomon was saying is that even on the latter end, he was trying to sit down and count all, uh, you know, and think about it. Have you ever tried to sit down and literally count all your faults? Let me ask you that. Have you ever tried to do that? You know, and I'll, I'll tell you, if you really want, if you want being, if you have humility about it, and if you're being honest, you know, and I'll just say this, you know, it's probably countless, you know, it really is. And it's a shame. So, you know, with that being said, and with our failures and our faults and our shortcomings, you know, again, even, you know, Adam from the very beginning, you know, God just wanted him to choose him. But even with all that being said, isn't it so great that we got a God that still is willing to bless us as much as he does countless amount of times, you know, with that in mind, you know, even despite all of our countless faults, you know, thank God for that. You know, that should really, that should get you excited. That should give, that should make you happy that we got a savior of the whole world that thinks about the little guy, you know, that we have somebody that loves us so much to where he blesses us a countless amount of times, you know, because I'll, friend, I'll tell you, if I tried to sit down and count all the times that God has blessed me or taken care of me of things, it would be countless. I might be able to come up with on my hand or even a number, but even then, what about all the times, the uh, things that he has blessed me of that I'm unaware of or the things that he's taken care of me of? Uh, that I don't know about, you know, what about those times? It would be countless. It's impossible. You know, I guess you could say, you know, and that's the thing about it is when you got an unlimited God, you know, uh, thank God, you know, that, he, you know, again, that he makes intercession for us. Intercession meaning basically he intervenes for us. But look what he said right here, though. He said, lo, in verse 29, to finish up the chapter, lo, this only have I found that God hath made man upright, but they have sought out many inventions. You know, so uh, he's basically saying that, you know, you'll find upright men out there. You will, you know, and and you can. I'm not saying as a Christian you can't find good people out there. You know, certainly can. A Christian or not, you can find good people out there. But honestly, you know, friend, let me tell you, there are so many inventions out there, so many devices, I guess you could say. And I'm not talking like electronics or anything. I'm talking anything. There are so many things out there that even with the fullest amount of wisdom that we could have, there are so many things out there that could take your heart away from what's important. And, and we should never allow, you know, again, even in, in, you could be one of the wisest people in the entire world and still have an ignorance about you, still have a lack of knowledge or something, or still have, you know, a lack of understanding of something, you know, and that's why, again, we talk about all the time. It's a learning way. But even with our shortcomings, again, you know, God blesses us countless amounts of time. You know, thank God for that. You know, thank God for the ending of that chapter. But you know, I guess, you know, kind of sweet and simple and to the point, you know, but again, you kind of understand why this was split up in the two parts. But friend, let me tell you, you know, if we go and we apply ourselves to learn, you know, more wisdom of God, you know, to get gain more experiences to where we could, I guess you could say, learn, have more wisdom about us, you know, we're able to walk that straight and narrow path more, you know, we are, you know, because, you know, God is, God doesn't, you know, he, he doesn't limit those things to us, you know, he doesn't, he doesn't limit those things, you know, that's why, but also too, let me tell you, you know, it, you know, he even said, you have not because you ask not, you know, we got a lot of people that, you know, and I'll say this, you know, I've met some Christians that are good people, but you sometimes wonder, you know, why they're still a babe in Christ, you know, when they've been saved for a, a, a long time, you know, and that's because they're not applying their heart to know, just like Solomon was doing here, to understand and know more wisdom or to gain more experience or to gain more knowledge. Well, you know, I think that's a duty of a Christian. You know, we should definitely, you know, God doesn't want us to just stay in one spot. You know, something Brother Kevin Payne, I've been talking about him a lot lately, you know, but he's, he's another one of those brothers that got a lot of wisdom about him. God is a moving target, but you got to move with him. You know, if you're staying in the one same spot, you're going to get complacent. You know, God, God wants us to move with them. That's why, you know, I fully believe that's kind of why he wanted the children of Israel to move with them. Because when they would stop moving, what would they do? They'd start sinning is what they would do. And they had wisdom about them, too. They did. You know, they, they might have had different levels, I guess you could say, of wisdom. But they are still, there were elders there that were also doing the very same thing. You know, they knew better. You know, friend, let me tell you, you know, even despite all that. You know, we know what we got to do. We know that we need to seek the Lord out for more wisdom, and we should love it. We should embrace it, but also, too, we should pray for more more, more opportunities to gain more of it. But that's that's the ending of the thought that I have in my heart. I hope this blesses you, and I'm thank, thankful for all those that have tuned in. And as always, you know, if you have any other topics or questions that you might have, just let me know. And God bless.